Hey guys, so let's talk about how developers, how they can choose which technologies to learn and when to learn them. So what you're gonna see in your career as a developer, you're gonna see the emergence and the dying of many technologies. You're gonna see new technologies come on and people who are behind these technologies will tell you, it is the most important thing ever. You have to learn it, right? And then their competitor will say the same thing. And you're going, oh my God, oh my God. So you go on Stack Overflow and you're like, you got all these different opinions. It's just, oof, what do you do? What do you choose? Whether you're a front end developer, full stack web, Python, PHP, whatever, you're going to see this. You're going to see technologies evolve, technologies come, technologies go. And if you try to learn every single thing, you try to follow up on every single thing, you're never, you're never going to be able to get any work done. That's why the strategy, what I've learned over the last 20 years, the way it works best for you as a professional is to learn your core, to learn your basics on so full stack. That's it's uh, HTML5, CSS3, JavaScript. And then you learn your server-side language. Now I advocate for PHP for a whole bunch of reasons I won't get into now, but whatever your server-side language is, and you learn that. And then you start building little mini apps, just build little mini apps, just so you, so you put it all together. Now, a good course will provide that for you. So from there, what do you do? So in the web stack, let's use that, that as an example. Now, because CSS was originally designed in a uh, less than optimal way, shall we say, it was actually designed for page layout as opposed to, uh, no, excuse me, it was designed for styling documents rather than for user interface design. Now, you think about documents, it's like a page, right? So you have headline text and you put some images and stuff, but how about creating a grid UI, user interface, right? Where you two columns stuff. Now you can do it with traditional CSS, but it's not intuitive to say the least. Now, a good course, a good course will teach you how to do it. There's just three things you gotta pay attention to. And it's really easy, in fact, once you understand that, but whatever, it uh, is not intuitive to say the least. So as a result of that, uh, some uh, developers came out with uh, libraries, frameworks. Bootstrap is the most popular for CSS. And they have a bootstrap grid system where you, it's a bunch of code, a bunch of CSS code, a bunch of JavaScript code, jQuery. And it, uh, it basically allows you to lay out pages without having to understand the inner workings of the browser so much. And it just saved you a lot of time and headaches and it's super popular became super popular. So uh, Bootstrap 4 just came out, 3 is still widely used, 4 came out, and uh, it's cool, but again, if you're taught properly how to use core CSS, even some of the older school stuff, it's easy, you can get it done pretty quickly. But it's not super intuitive. Now, in the last year or so, something core to CSS has come out, something called CSS Grids, and CSS Flexbox. And it makes it really easy for you to create user interfaces with CSS without having to use a bootstrap. So you're faced with a decision as a developer, a budding developer, experienced developer. Do you learn the new bootstrap 4? Do you stick to bootstrap 3? Or do you go into CSS Grid, CSS uh, Flexbox? Number one lesson, always stick to core technology over third-party libraries. Bootstrap, third-party library. CSS Grid, Flexbox, Cortec. It's now widely supported, although it may not work in older browsers. Well, it won't work in older browsers. So when do you use CSS Grid? You use it when you are working on a job where you don't have to be dependent on the older browser. So what you do if you go into see established client that they got web traffic, you check their stats. You see if they're using browsers that can read CSS Grid or not. You may not need to use it, by the way. If your old techniques work, why use it? You know, you have to decide when you want to use things. Don't use a technology just because it's out there. That's a silly thing to do, especially the cutting edge stuff, because there's going to be problems that people have not discovered yet, and why should you be the one trying to solve all these problems and headaches? You just want to get the jobs out. So anyway, before you decide which technology you're going to use on the browser end, you have to look at what technology, what web browsers are visiting that person's sites. If it's a brand new site, you have to look at the business model. If they're 
dealing with an older baby boomer crowd, you might figure, eh, they're going to be using older browsers, you know, older people. My grandfather's web browser, you know, my grandfather doesn't like update my, well, he passed away. But my, you know, my father not necessarily will want to update his web browser as much as a young hipster. But if you're developing a website would be frequented by technology aware people, then you know they're going to be using the cutting edge. So you know you can use the latest stuff. You get the idea. So you have to look at all these factors when you're choosing a technology. You notice I'm not saying you should use CSS Grid because it's better because of XY nerd reasons or Bootstrap because of XY nerd reasons. I'm talking about business considerations. That's very important. Sorry for the lighting change. The sun's going around. You know, this is a vlog, so it's not, uh, the production value is not as high as it would be otherwise. Anyhow, uh, so when you're choosing a tech, you have to look at the big picture, not just the technology itself. You have to look at what the job demands, right? And uh, that's a lot about being a web professional, is being able to bring that knowledge, sit down and say, okay, what are we doing here, right? And to make, to make the choices accordingly. When it comes back to choosing which technologies to learn, you want to favor core technologies like CSS Grid over Bootstrap 4. As an example, let me give you a historical example of how core technologies always beat third-party technologies. Now, once upon a time, Flash, you may have heard of it, Flash was super popular, especially for video embeds and so forth. And for all kinds of reasons I'll get into, um, it was killed off. Steve Jobs did a good job at doing that too. But uh, it was killed off in favor of HTML5. Why? Because HTML5 was non-proprietary. It was core to the browser. So bye-bye, Flash. And I gave you all kinds of other examples as well. So favor core versus third party all the time if the core technologies can handle it. And look, when HTML5 first hit the scene, a lot of Flash people are saying, HTML5 can't do nearly what you could do with Flash. And that was true at the time didn't matter because core wins in the end. So keep that in mind when you're making your choices. So the next thing you have to consider is when do you learn a new technology? Oh, when, when? Well, let me tell you, if you try to learn the new technologies whenever they come out, you'll never have time to make any money writing code. So this is how it works. 20 years experience has taught me this. You learn your core, you learn it well. So if you're doing a web stack, you learn HTML5, CSS3, you learn your JavaScript, you understand a request response model, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. Then you pick a server side language if you're going to do full stack. I recommend PHP because it's the most popular web development language in the world. I'm not saying it's technically the best. I believe that all the modern technologies and web stacks and server side programming, they all have their pros and cons. They're all very capable. They're all very capable. I just prefer PHP because it's used a lot in freelance, it's used in WordPress, it's easy to get started with, and it's very capable, and the PHP community is huge. PHP is not going, PHP is not going anywhere because it's so huge. When a technology reaches to a certain level in terms of how much it's used, it just, it just doesn't go away. And PHP has reached that level. Let me give you an example of a competing technology to PHP, which though had its uh, heyday, it was, it was like, got a lot of buzz, it was very popular, it has now faded into obscurity, as I predicted way back in 2006, 2007, and that's Ruby, Ruby on Rails. Now Ruby and Ruby on Rails, if you're not familiar, is a web framework, and Ruby's a language, very cool language, very cool framework, in terms of uh, my nerd appreciation of Ruby and Ruby on Rails, oh, I give it top marks. But I knew even back then, and I blogged about it and took a lot of heat. I wrote an article, and I think I said, said Ruby on Rails is, uh, why Ruby on Rails is flying off the rails, and uh, something like that. And I got a lot of hate, and woof, <laughs> it was pretty, pretty fun. But I turned out to be correct. And the reason I knew that Ruby was going to fade into niche, not because I said the technology is inferior, is because um, two things. A, because I felt that the advantage that Ruby and Rails brought to the game would be reproducible by the other uh, languages out there. And sure enough, it came out. PHP has Laravel as an example, and Python has Django. And there's pros and cons against all, again, to all these frameworks. But, you know, 
you're, you can be equally as productive in each of these frameworks. So the big advantage, there was no big advantage for Ruby and there was disadvantages. The core Ruby language ran, runs very, very slow compared to PHP. And uh, Ruby is uh, uh, too specialized. You know, if you're doing Ruby, you could do it for server automation and stuff like that. But at the end of the day, most people who do Ruby, they do it for web app creation. The problem is the vast majority of web apps, 85%, are created in PHP. Why PHP is easy to learn, easy to get started up, set up with, and there's a, such a huge amount of small businesses that rely on PHP, it's not going anywhere. So, in terms of uh, other use cases where you might want a scripting language and a cool language, you got Python. Python is used all over the place. So, Ruby, I knew, was going to be squeezed out by PHP at one end and by uh, Python on the other end. And I knew that .NET, c -sharp .NET, and uh, Java was going to just crush it from the top for the enterprise. So fair enough, years later, here we go, Ruby has faded. Again, it wasn't a, so much a technical decision why I decided not to invest in Ruby, Ruby Rails. It was because of uh, business. I understood the business. I understand the trends of things. So with that example in mind, I think that um, after you learn your basic web stack, would I jump into Bootstrap 4? No. Uh, on the peripheral, maybe. It'd be cool to learn a little bit of it, just a grid system, and just understand what it can bring. But at the end of the day, once you know your basics, you have to pick and choose what you're going to learn next. And what makes you decide what to learn next is the jobs that you do. I always say learn on a need-to-nerd basis. That's the key to all this stuff. Need to nerd basis. You learn your basics. You learn responsive site design with my course or whatever course that you choose to do. And then if you're looking for a job, go look, see what they want you to know. If they want you to know Bootstrap 4, then you go learn Bootstrap 4. You pick, you pick up the grid system in like, you know, a couple of days. You know, no big deal. You do a YouTube video, ba ba bang or whatever. You do a course and you're done. It's not that hard. Once you know your basics well, that's the key learn your basics well. You may find that they don't use Bootstrap. They may say, well, we want you to know Bootstrap 3, and we use a little Bootstrap 4, but Bootstrap 3 more. So you got to learn Bootstrap 3. Or you may see another place say, no, we're into CSS Grid and uh, CSS uh, Flexbox. And then we, we do that, not so much Bootstrap. You get the idea. But if you're trying to learn everything, you won't have time to do anything. So as a developer, you're going to learn on the job, learn on a need to nerd basis. That's why it's so important that you learn your fundamentals well, because once you know your fundamentals, all these things are easy. And other experienced developers will tell you that. Check out my C++ video where I got over 300,000 views. There's some ex experienced C++ coders with 30 years experience, they concurred with me. They said, yeah, you can't learn everything. You learn what you need at the time. That's your job as a developer, by the way. It's not expected you know everything. They'll put it on the red, they'll put it on the, uh, you know, job descriptions, the HR department, especially large firms, but the reality of the matter is you're just going to, you just, you just go in there and you go, okay, I'm going to learn this, I'm going to learn that. And that's what I would do in my career. Now, as a freelancer, you just need to know your basics. You got to get your good site up. You got to be able to put out some basic apps and then you just start building from there. And then again, I would walk into a job and I would say, okay, what are we doing here? Okay, boom, boom, boom. We're doing this. All right, we're going to use Bootstrap 3. We're going to use this. We're going to use that depending on the needs of the particular job. So, number one, lesson to take away. I'm going to wrap this up because i got to get packing. Number one, you should stick to core tech over third-party libraries when you have to make that choice. Number two, you learn on a need-to-nerd basis, so don't try to learn everything right away. And number three, you concentrate on your core, you concentrate on the core technologies, and then you uh, poke in, poke around and see what's out there so you're aware. You're aware of CSS Grid. You're aware of Bootstrap 4. You're aware of uh, basically what's going on there and where you might want to use one or the other, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And uh, that's how the careers actually go in the real world. That's, you know, don't let the pundits, don't let the people who are backing uh, Bootstrap fool you into thinking, you have to learn Bootstrap. You might have to learn Bootstrap at some point. But again, if you know your basics, you're ready to go. So I do have like a basic bootstrap intro. It's for an older bootstrap in the course, in the course package. But at the end of the day, like I said, you know your basics with me, then you can, you know, 
There's all kinds of YouTube videos out there. You can learn in like, you know, 20 minutes. Or you, it's not necessarily something you're going to use, right? Imagine I put out a course where I, I, I tried to cover every single library, every single framework. You would be, in, be learning for what, five years. <laughs> it's impossible. So my job as a teacher is to filter, right? I have to filter out the unnecessary stuff and to give you the tools to help you evaluate and understand the markets, like I just taught you. Favorite core technology, learn on a need to nerd basis, concentrate on your basics. That is gonna push you forward in your developer career uh, much more quickly than trying to learn the latest and greatest framework all the time. I hope that makes sense, bye-bye.